there's there's a there's a sense of drama. There's a sense of uh, kind of gladiatorial combat um, that you don't get anywhere else in the world. The South Africans, you know, they go hard. They, they I think they they almost try to go out of your way to to intimidate you a little bit. It's a hostile environment to be in, and uh, it was a missed opportunity. But I don't think we did anyone did themselves any injustice. You know, I'd said. To to the players before the game that it's not the jersey you put on, it's the jersey you take off. In this Spirit of Rugby series, Rugby Pass and the famous grouse official whiskey of the British and Irish Lions look ahead to this much anticipated series by looking back. We talk to players from the two most recent tours to South Africa who are now etched in Lions folklore. If this doesn't get you excited, then nothing will. So when you landed in South Africa in 2009, as soon as you got off the plane, could you feel the kind of energy change and, the, and that it was time for business? Yeah, you, you, you go on tour and it's, everything is building up towards the test, isn't it? The warm-up games, whilst they're important, everything is geared towards that first test. I remember the fact they they got a bit of forward momentum in that game. We missed some chances. Uh, I remember missing two off the tee. You always uh, remember what you missed as a kicker. You know, so six points gone there. And, you know, uh, you know, as the game was going on, we were getting, you know, back into it. And the momentum was with us. It wasn't so much about who we were playing at the time, but something to happen, which probably could affect the whole tour. We probably weren't prepared for, you know, maybe the level of brutality that they were bringing. It was disappointing, but at the same time, we knew that we hadn't played particularly well and that the following week were going to be an awful lot better. And you scored as well that day. Sublime offload by Stephen Jones. Yeah, sublime offload. It was it was incredible. I wasn't even expecting it. I had to juggle it with one hand. Beautiful offload for Connie. The best thing for me was Rob's finish. I loved it, do you mean? Because he, he still had uh, a bit, bit of work to do. When, when you're a kid and you, you go to bed at night time, you know, you fantasize about these moments, about kicking the winning drop goal in a game or a conversion or, or scoring a try for the Lions. And I was definitely one of those kids growing up, you know, and for it to actually happen, you know, you, you dream about these things your whole life. Would you say that that's the greatest game of your career? A lot of people would say that, and I watched it back and hands down, you were the best player on the pitch that day. I'd say Simon Shaw might have something to say about that. Um, <laughs> oh, listen, I, I think it was certainly up there. It, it has to have been. It, it, it was the biggest game of my career to date. It was the best that I'd ever played up until that. You know, you always want to play your best games on the very big stage. It's one of the best fullback performances I think I've, I've ever seen in a Lions shirt. Lions brings out different things in players when you get into that environment. And it does challenge you and it changes you. You know, Shaw's, he was, I mean, what he put into it and, and just what he did that afternoon was, was quite incredible. All I've ever wanted to do is walk down the street in five, 10, 15 years from now and, you know, with my son or daughter on my side and someone sort of point over and say, oh, that's, that's Simon Shaw. He was X, Y, Z in the Lions 2009 and, and just kind of give me a fist pump. The, the words came out of my mouth post-match, I just wanted to be a part of it and win. To me, it's probably the most physical test match I think I've ever experienced. You know, unfortunately, we, en we ended up with injuries as well. We when both centres disappear and both props go in less than 10 minutes, I think, in the second half. I actually, I actually weirdly didn't feel at any point when players were going off, you know, with arms and slings and all the rest of it, I actually just didn't think that there was any way we could lose it still. You know, you see sort of your fellow kind of soldiers, whatever you want to call them, going off and you, you think you might get down, downheartened by it. But I, I actually, there was so much belief within that squad that I just did, didn't think it necessarily affected us. This for the series win. It's got the distance. Stay! Man, it was awful. It really was. Like I've been playing this game for 15 years now, and and that ranks as number one worst loss and, and biggest defeat that I've ever had to take. 
you know, to, lo to lose a game in the last minute like that and, and the manner, that was a bitter pill to swallow. The players knew it wasn't Ronan and Agara's fault we lost that game. It was, you know, it should have been um, well, well sorted before that. Go back in the change rooms after being in your own little world for, you know, five, say five minutes. You, you want to then interact and talk to your teammates and, you know, sort of discuss the game, debrief the game. And I remember the change rooms were pretty bare, purely because so many guys had gone to hospital, you know, to get either operated on or checked on you. It's still probably, in some respects, the most powerful dressing room I've walked back into because it was silent. You just saw the players and you you knew what players give. Yeah, listen, of course it was an opportunity missed. I think how close the second test was, you know, that could have swung either way. You would love to have seen a, a, a one-all game going into that third test. You know, win, lose or draw, the, the first two t test matches were, were monumental test matches. It was an incredible series for the game of rugby and for, for you know, for the spirit of Lions rugby.